Today we are testing out all of Nikon's wide angle DX zoom. So we have the Z 12 to 28 power zoom. We have the F mount 10 to 24. That's this one. 12 to 24. The bigger brother. And the 10 to 20. A little sister. So we're going to test all of them out. We're going to put them all on a tripod and we're going to take pictures of this viaduct. Hopefully the sun will come out and it will stop raining. One Wish day. us luck. We're going to camp in here <laughs> till the sun comes up. So we've got a tripod with us today. This is Con's Peak Design Carbon Fiber Travel Tripod. So nice and light considering it's taken us about two hours of walking to get here. Mm. And we're gonna basically try the 1228, 1224, 1024 and 1020 all with the FTZ on the Z50 and see which ones perform better for architecture. Yeah, you just vault over. You can't give me a leg up, no? I can get my leg up. I'm, I'm shooting. <laughs> Oh. Come on, jump up. Yeah, just jump up. I'm like, I'm gonna watch you try. Who needs brick wall shots? <laughs> okay. Hey, Becky, how's Hi. it going? It's going great. Yeah, two weeks to climb up. Thanks. <laughs> I just don't wanna pull my shoulder. <laughs> okay, so can't, what, what are we doing here? Well, we're doing a bit of parkour, a bit of architecture photography, <laughs> testing some lenses, and overall having a great fun together. So, in this case, because you get this basically an infinity loop into those arches, that creates a very interesting shot. And what we try to do is just climb up a little bit, put everything on the tripod, and hopefully the pictures will speak for themselves. All right, now looking at the lenses, obviously 1228 is a native Z lens, and that way you don't need to faff about with FTZ adapter. However, because it's a power zoom and it's great for videographers and it works okay for still photography, having a proper photographer zoom lens with a proper mechanical zoom ring, not fly-by-wire thing, is quite useful because if you need to nail that composition perfectly, you can do that with a mechanical ring and with a power zoom, you have to play a little bit together. So not a deal breaker, but again, if you do this type of software where you set everything up and you want to be very precise, I guess F-mount lens is still a better choice for this case. We've now had a chance to do some brick wall tests of all of these lenses and take a look at the finer details to work out which one is best. First of all, in terms of the tests, because the F-mount lenses would have to go to FTZ, to FTZ adapter, so they would be a little bit close to the wall. So what you see is actually a slightly closer image so it would look like it magnified a little bit more. It's just to do uh, with the, the tripod didn't move but actually the lens, the front element was much closer to the wall compared to 1228 lens. Exactly. And also the different lenses are different sizes. So there are some tiny millimeters of difference in the image that you get, but 
We have shot all of them wide open and stopping all the way down to about f16 at both the widest end and the longest end that each lens can cover. All right, well, let's have a look at the images. We've put the 12s side by side because they both have the same 12 millimeter widest angle. And we put the 10s, 1020 and 1024 together, but we'll show you all of them on the screen. What's surprising to me, uh, by looking at the center sharpness of 1228 at 3.5, it's sharper than the rest of the lenses. And that is even compared to the most expensive 1224, which is at a 4 and not 3.5. The 1228 is shot by 3.5, the 1224 at a 4. That's impressive to me. Yes. Now, if we also compare the 10 to 20, which is the cheaper plastic AFP lens versus the 10 to 24, which was essentially a newer version of the 1224, a newer, cheaper version, the 10 to 24 does actually hold up against the 10 to 20. It's slightly sharper. But the differences are very slight with those two. So if we have to put them in its pl in their places, then first place would be the native Z1228. The second one would be 10 to 24 F mount. Then it would be surprisingly 10 to 20. And the worst one of them all is 1224, which is supposed to be the best DXF mount wide angle lens. So now let's move into the corners. So with the corners, the 12 to 28 is again sharper than the rest of them and has less distortion and less vignetting wide open. The 12 to 24 is very, very soft in the corners from what we can see. Again, surprising for it supposed to be being the best lens of them all. That's right. When we move on to the 10 to 24s, the 10 to 20, which is a cheaper budget lens, does lose a lot of detail in the corners, while the 10 to 24, again, holds its own much better than we would expect. If we compare the two top place winners, shall we say, the 12 to 28 and the 10 to 24, they're not far off each other. To summarize, the winner is the 12 to 28Z, which I'm surprised at because of its price point. Agreed. In second place, we have the 10 to 24, which has been around a little bit longer than this little end, but I think optically it holds its own. Absolutely. Then we've got 10 to 20, a budget F mount lens, which is the last ultra wide angle DX lens that they released. And that one, being a budget option, surprisingly still better than the 1224, which was the first ultra wide angle DX lens that Nikon released, has a golden ring saying it's professional, but it seems like the technology advanced so much that the most expensive lens on the list is actually the worst performing one. We did also compare them at the longer end, 28, 24, and 20 on these lenses, but to be honest, the results are essentially the same or very, very similar. So we would rank them in the same positions we've given them for the wider end. In conclusion, if you've got a Nikon DX camera and you're looking for an ultra wide angle DX lens for your system, currently just go for 1228. You can't go wrong. However, if you miss the mechanical zoom ring, then 1024 will be the second best choice. And that will probably be a better lens maybe for stills photographers. But if you do a bit of both, then 1228 is actually a better lens. And in terms of image quality, 1228 is also built slightly better. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you found this video useful. Please give us a like and a subscribe. Tell us which one would you choose yourself for, G for your DX wide angle photography. And if you found this video super useful, there's a super thanks button as well. See you next time. There we go. Not a doctor. <laughs>